And here we are at Watt Motorhome's latest ultimate showdown. We're at Billing Aqua Drive near Northampton with 10 motorhomes. And in this glorious spring sunshine in front of these wonderful lakes on this site, we've got a real selection. We've got van conversions, we've got coach built with over cabs, we've got low profiles, and key difference, we've got five on my right that are second hand, five on my left that are brand new all in the same price bracket. Now we're looking at 40 to 50,000 pounds, which is a typical spend for a brand new motorhome. But should you buy brand new or would you be better off buying used? That's what we're trying to find out today. What offers the best value for money for 50 grand or under? Now, all these vehicles have been supplied by UK's largest dealer network, Marquis, who live, in this case, just over the road, Northampton. That's one of their many branches dotted around the UK. Now, we're going to start with the brand new vans, so let's take a closer look at those. Our very first contender is this Autocruise Alto, the only brand new van conversion that we've got here. Now Autocruise is a Swift Group brand, and this particular vehicle has just had five grand knocked off by Marquis, making it look a very attractive deal, especially as it's got an enhancement pack on it as well. Now that gives you a touchscreen radio with sat-nav, an upgraded engine, electric folding mirrors, and the climate control air conditioning rather than just the basic cab air conditioning. Now, it's a 6.36 metre extra long wheelbase van conversion, so about as big as most mass-produced van conversions get, and it's a fixed bed layout, so it's very much on the money, on trend today. Let's have a look inside. Now, up front, it's a very conventional half dinette, so this vehicle is quite versatile in that you can carry two passengers in the back in fully belted travel seats. And it makes quite a cosy little lounging dining area, especially on a nice day like today when you can look out and enjoy the view of our cameraman. Now, moving back through the vehicle, you've got the kitchen here built partly across the, the doorway with a sink and a two burner hob. But more than that, you've also got a grill and a microwave. So quite a decent spec to the kitchen, although it is short of storage space. Now, you make up for the storage space with the space under the bed. And this layout really is all about the comfort of a really good fixed bed with this nice Juvelo mattress in a van conversion. And you've got more than just a bed. You've got this really good vanity area at the side of the bed, TV point at the foot, so on a grotty day you can lie in bed and watch uh, neighbours or whatever. And then these nice pleated blinds on the windows as well. So some upmarket touches. moving from van conversion to a coach built and actually a coach built that's slightly shorter than the van conversion we've just looked at. This is fractionally under the crucial six meters in an overall length. It's a Marquis Majestic 105. What's that? It's a special edition version of Eldis's Accordo range. Now Accordo is all about compact van conversion sized coach builds, but you still get the benefit of the flat sides that give you more room inside, as well as the extra insulation benefits of a coach built motorhome. This one is classic two berth layout, and with Majestic, rather than the standard Accordo, you get extra spec too, because this range is exclusive to Marquis. Now, what else do you get? Well, you get things like 150 bhp engine, you get ESP, you get an alarm system. So quite a bit of extra kit for 43 grand in this case, so cheaper than the Autocruise too. Let's take a look inside. And as we go past, just notice how 
this coach bill is very, very little wider than a van conversion. Whereas most coach bills here stick out quite a bit, this one is barely any wider than the cab. Now, by using side settees in a classically British layout, this vehicle immediately feels a lot bigger inside. Although actually, it's to all intents and purposes, smaller on the outside. How have they done that? Well, basically because there's no fixed bed in this vehicle and there's no rear travel seats. So you've got a very open layout, but one that only works for two people. You can't ever carry rear passengers in this vehicle. So these settees give you the ideal opportunity for feet up lounging on site. And at night time, they make a transverse double bed. Good storage underneath too, and I like these nets to stop all your gear falling out. Then as we move through to the kitchen, again, it's quite well equipped. Microwave as standard, combined oven and grill, and the hob has got a mains hot plate as well as three burners, and it's quite a nice upmarket cooker. Pity the fridge then only has um, old-fashioned push-button ignition, but there's plenty of storage, upper and lower hanging rails in the wardrobe, and probably um, a better sized washroom than you'd get in many a six metre van conversion, although it's looking a little bit dated in there. One of the advantages, of course, of buying new is that you can spec different options. And an advantage of the Fiat over the Peugeot is that you can have a Comfortmatic semi-automatic gearbox. So if you need two pedal motoring, Fiat beats Peugeot. This one hasn't got it, but it's just to make the point that when you're buying new, it's the sort of thing you can specify that when you're looking at buying used, might be much more of an issue. So another little six meter van, another low profile, another classic two berth. Let's take a look inside. And as soon as we're in the vehicle you notice that there's a slight change to the layout in that the kitchen's now across the back. We've still got the same twin settees up front so still very much a two-person vehicle, no rear travel seats but again plenty of living space especially once you've got these captain's chairs swiveled round to face the rear. These settees are a little longer, so when the cab seats are mated up to those settees, you can just about use them as single beds with your feet on the cab seats. Transverse double is still an option as well, and this vehicle's a bit more upmarket than the eldest Majestic that we've just looked at. So you've got this big overcab sunroof, a little bit of wood trim, you've got the white covers on the door mirrors outside, and there's some nice spec touches like the AES operation on the fridge and it just feels a little bit more modern inside. Still got microwave high up and this time the cooker not only has the mains hot plate but you've actually got a separate grill and oven so if you like your cooking that's something to look out for. If you like your bling then this nice acrylic illuminated splashback is nice to have too but the thing I really like about this Motown for a small van, and remember this is only six metres long, is that you've got a separate shower in the washroom. If there's one downside to it, when we looked at the Majestic, we said that it's very, very little wider than a van conversion. This vehicle is a full 2.38 metres wide, so as wide as most coach builds get. And if you're taking it down little country lanes, that's something to think about. And now, as they say, for something completely different, from British motorhomes to a Spanish one, from low profiles to an overcab coach built, 
from three and a half tonnes to four and a quarter tonnes, from two birds to six birds. So we've got a completely different animal here, something with lots of space, lots of payload, over a tonne of payload because of that heavy chassis. But do think, check your driving licence. If you pass your test after 1997, you won't be able to drive this without taking an extra test. But old guys like me drive it no problem at all and it's a nice vehicle with a big, big garage at the back. Let's take a look at that. So a ton of payload and plenty of space to use that payload. This bed actually winds up on a handle, just put in a winding handle in there and the bed will go up so you can have even more height in there. Checker plate flooring so it's really practical. Bikes, barbecues, whatever you want in there, loads and loads of storage. Now, Benny Mar's only been back in the UK for a couple of years and exclusively through the Marquis dealer network. But when you look at the spec and the pricing, you can see why they've made such an impact on the British scene. You get the door on the UK side, in the cab you get sat nav and reversing camera, you get the, the posh framed windows, you get external barbecue point and this vehicle is one of the newest additions to the range. Three over cab models have just been added to the Benimar lineup for the UK and they've all got these big over cab beds and this one is a really good family van. Now one thing that I do like and it's really unusual, normally when you're traveling, this is a little inward facing seat here, but slot in this cushion and the backrest and it opens up the lounge so you could get a family all round for dining. Table extends too and you've got a little infill to extend that cushion so three kids across there will just about work. I talked about spec too and Marquis really do spec this vehicle up to suit British buyers. Now the things they do include adding an oven over there, a mains hot plate which you never normally see on a continental van, a microwave above the fridge freezer. It's really got everything that a UK built motorhome would have but with a bit of continental style. Now of course as well as the overcab bed and the bed you can make from the lounge, mum and dad's bed is going to be this one at the back. This is on its lowest position. Of course, if you want more garage space underneath and have raised it up, access won't be quite as easy, but with these two steps, it won't be difficult. You've got a big wardrobe, big fridge freezer, which I always like to see, especially in something that uh, purports to be a family motorhome, because you'll soon fill that up with feeding four or six of you. And the other thing I really like about this motorhome is the bathroom area is a really good size with a proper separate shower. So if you're going to go motorhoming mob handed, this is definitely one to look at. So from one exclusive to Marquis product to another. But this one comes from the UK's largest manufacturer, Swift, and Lifestyle is Marquis's version of an Escape. Now you can immediately see the difference from an Escape because Lifestyle comes with this distinctive black cab, but it also comes with a lot more kit, including things like reversing camera and so on. Inside though, this is a different variation on the family motorhome theme. Let's see why it's different. Again, because it's a Marquis Special Edition, you've got a high spec cab. This one's got the automatic air conditioning, sat nav reversing camera and so on. And it's the 130 bhp Fiat engine with the option, but not here of the Comfortmatic gearbox. But the interesting thing perhaps to start with is this lounge area because you've got a slot in cushion here which turns the Pullman dinette with the side settee into a sort of L shape. 
table of course clips on here but it's safer to have it stowed away for travel so that's a good thing especially as this is a family vehicle and it is a family vehicle because it's got six seat belts now to do that they've had to go to a 3650 kilo chassis so again think of your driving license but six seat belts six birds two up there big overcab bed two down here and then the other two at the back now as any parent knows there's probably no better option for kids in a motorhome than bunk beds and here you've got two good sized bunk beds with duvalet mattresses so that's the kids sorted at night time although the very vertical and permanently fitted ladder might require the upper occupant to be quite athletic kitchen typical british motorhome kitchen three burners oven and grill decent bit of worktop and more worktop always good to have plenty of worktop in a motorhome kitchen especially when you're trying to feed a family fridge isn't as big as the benny miles though it's only a relatively small fridge but should just about be adequate but the bathroom does lack the separate shower that you'd like in a family vehicle. Maybe something a bit more modern needs to be included in there. So that's our five brand new contenders. Now we've got five second-hand motorhomes to look at, starting with this Auto Sleeper Warwick Duo. Now, like all our second-hand contenders, this comes with Marquis's Automark three-year warranty, so you've got plenty of peace of mind there. And especially with this vehicle, because it's a 2015 model, it's not, not been on the road, not been on the campsites for long, and it's only done 3,000 odd miles. So you're getting nearly new vehicle at quite a decent saving off new price. It's one of Auto Sleeper's best-selling models, classic two berth with a rear lounge, and as we started with the uh, brand new vehicles, we're starting, of course, with a van conversion. This one's a bit shorter than the Alto that we looked at in the new vehicles at six meters, but it's got all the usual auto sleeper touches, alloy wheels, metallic paint, roof mounted awning, and so on. Now let's look at this classic of motorhome layouts. Now I describe this as a classic and in a way it is because rear lounge van conversions are amongst the most popular in their class. And you can see why on a nice day like this to sit here, enjoy the views of the lake behind, it's really rather pleasant. So why isn't it a classic? Well, because normally, and a lot of Warwick duos themselves are like this, you have two long parallel settees. But on this particular one, as an option when it was new, Auto Sleeper offer this little dinette instead. So one of you can put the feet up, one of you can sit more upright, and you can convert this back into a settee if you want, although it's not then just one cushion, it's a, it's a selection of cushions to make it. But it does offer an interesting permutation on what is a very, very popular layout. Now it perhaps says it all about Warwick Duo that there were four others on Marquis website, second-hand examples, all at the same time as we're reviewing this one. Now this one is a particularly clean example, it's very new as I've said, um, but you've got this lovely big expanse of kitchen, unusually so for a van conversion, lots of worktop, draining board for your sink, and then this pièce de résistance perhaps, the full cooker that you don't often see in a van where you've got not just the four rings on the hob, one of them electric, but separate grill and oven. And you've even got a microwave above and an extractor hood. So if you like cooking in your van conversion, then this is perhaps the one for you. The other thing that's different in this vehicle to most other rear lounge van conversions is that normally you'd find the kitchen on this side and the bathroom opposite. 
over here. Now, Autosleep has switched this around in the Warwick Duo, and I have to say, it works quite well, although it does make the sliding door entrance a bit narrow when you come in that way. But you have, of course, also got the option of coming in through the back doors. Now on the face of it, this van looks pretty much like that one. It's six meter Peugeot Boxer van conversion. It's champagne metallic. It's a pre-facelift cab, so it's not the very latest Peugeot Boxer shape, but it's got 2.2 liter HDI diesel engine. This one's 130 bhp. That one's 150 because it's a newer spec, but they look very similar, but inside, they are completely different. And this is a Sussex. Now that was originally a Marquis Special Edition. And as part of the Special Edition pack, you've got roof mounted air conditioning, which could be great if you're gonna spend summers in the south of France or Spain or wherever, but you will need a decent powerful hookup to power that unit. Other than that, this is the EB layout, end bathroom. So let's take a look at how different that is from the Warwick. So whereas in the Warwick Duo you sit at the back of the van, here the lounge is up front and using the cab seats, although they are considerably higher than the seats in the back because the floor steps down just after the cab. You've still got a nice view out through the big sliding door which is full height, so on a good day, good warm day like today, you've got lots of fresh air and light coming into the vehicle and even when the door's shut you've got a nice big sunroof over the top. It's not long enough to have single beds, so you sleep transversely in this vehicle. Um, layout, incidentally, is also seen in the Kemerton model if you like this and can't find a Sussex EB. Fabrics and furniture finishes are older auto sleeper style, but um, hey, it's just fashion. Windows, like all auto sleeper van conversions, are a thermic tinted glass, and you've got these nice posh pleated blinds. Single travel seat, which the Warwick Duo, of course, doesn't have any rear travel seat, so you can carry a third person, but with no headrest and a relatively low backrest, you might want that to be a shorter person or perhaps a child seat. Now, like the Warwick Duo, you've got a high spec kitchen with plenty of worktop, both on this side and over here above the fridge. Again, microwave extractor, but combined oven and grill this time. But who cares, you've got both anyway, that's probably enough for most of us. Three drawers under the wardrobe, that's a nice touch. Plenty of storage in the back of this vehicle. And then the piece de resistance is the washroom. How often in a van conversion, especially a six metre van conversion, have you got a separate wet area with the shower and basin in there? So that's, that's good. And if you're using CLs, farm sites, rally fields a lot, that could be a USP. Now our first used coach built is this Swift Bolero and it's no surprise that at Marquis there's umpteen Swifts on the website at any one time. In fact when we collected these vehicles there were six other Boleros on Marquis's stock list, all used vans. And they've also got everything from entry level escapes to big tag axle Contiki's. But this is a nice high spec vehicle, it's a low profile motorhome designed for two with a nice fixed bed and therefore it's right bang in the centre of what British motorhomers like. Big lounge, fixed bed, not too big, three and a half tonne chassis. This van has lots and lots of appeal for lots and lots of people. Let's see why. Mm -hmm. 
Now, when the X250, the wedge-shaped Fiat Ducato arrived, Swift were very quick on the scene with this Bolero, and it was the first British interpretation of the sort of modern low profile with the fixed bed and the big overcab sunroof and a nice low line body. Um, inspired perhaps by the Canal Sun Ti, which was the real innovator in this sector. Now, being a Swift, it's got a classic British layout with the side settees, so do bear in mind that this is very much a two-person vehicle, nowhere for anybody to travel in the back of the vehicle. Just the two seat belts up front. But of course, there are other Swift models that offer rear travel seats and plenty of other vehicles at Marquis that would do that job. What this does is give you a nice, big, light, open plan lounge area and some nice touches like these reading lights in the cab. Not so sure about this fake wood trim on the dashboard, but it is quite a nice high spec cab with air conditioning and these remote uh, stereo controls for the radio on the steering wheel. Now, Swift know how to turn on a bit of style sometimes, and you've got this nice splashback, the curved end to the kitchen unit, and plenty of kit too, microwave, full cooker, and so on. You've got big fridge freezer as well, and it's nice to see that this one chooses its power source for itself, so no fiddling about. But this is the classic French bed layout. What do we mean by French bed? Well, a bed against a sidewall, usually with this cut off, so the, the person that's shorter really needs to sleep this side, because otherwise you tend to find that one leg dangles off the side of the bed. And then the other thing about a French bed layout is normally the washroom is here alongside. Compromising that is obviously that the bathroom and the bed have to share the width of the vehicle. So do check bed measurements are adequate for you, especially if you're broad or very tall, and make sure that it's a big enough bed. And also make sure that the space in the washroom is not too confined. This one's quite a decent compromise and the previous owners obviously like to watch a bit of telly in bed because you've got a flat screen on a bracket up there which looks like it'll swivel around and you'll be able to watch that from the lounge as well. Now, okay, this vehicle is a 2011 model but it still looks in reasonable nick and it really does show the sort of saving that you can make by buying used because something like this would be considerably more brand new. So we go from 2011 Swift to a 2014 Adria. Now this doesn't come from quite as an upmarket a range because this is Coral Access and Access is pretty much entry level in Adria terms. But three years newer and only a couple of grand more. So that looks quite tempting. And this vehicle's only done a bit over 10,000 miles so it's, it's hardly seen a lot of life yet. But the key thing about this is it's an island bed model. Now, island beds are all the rage these days. Everybody wants them because access, getting in and out of the bed is just like at home. But the problem is there aren't yet that many used examples of island bed motorhomes because they're a relatively new phenomenon in the market. So finding one like this is a good find. Let's take a look at the appeal of an island bed. So what exactly is an island bed? Well, it's a bed like you'd have at home with access on either side, very often with wardrobes in each corner. And this one is even better because during the day, it makes a great place to lounge with this tilted backrest. And then at night, just pull it flat and you've got a nice comfy double bed. And not only that, but you've got a sliding door here to close it all off. Separate shower that side, toilet area this side. So the whole back end of the vehicle is an ensuite bedroom. Now, sometimes people talk about continental kitchens not being as good as British ones, but there's not much to criticize here. You've got nice big fridge freezer, you've got an oven and grill, 
You've got a little slot in draining board when you need that. And when you don't, this three in a line hob leaves a reasonable amount of work top around it. Then drawers are always much better than cupboards and you've got plenty of drawer space in this kitchen as well. Then you step up again into the lounge area, which is typical of a continental motorhome with this half dinette arrangement and a little side seat over there. But it all feels very contemporary, the duotone furniture, the fabrics are modern enough, big, big sunroof and a second sunroof over the lounge. Lots of natural light and good artificial light as well. The media wall, it feels like a modern motorhome and that is the real appeal of this. It doesn't feel like you're compromising by buying second hand. And so to our very last van, the last used van from our selection as well. And it's an auto sleeper Worcester. It's a 2011 vehicle, so one of the oldest ones here, but also one of the most, well, the most expensive of the used vans. Why? Because of this Merc badge. As a Mercedes and a big top of the range auto sleeper, this would have been by far and away the most expensive of our used vans when it was new. This one's just had five grand locked off its price, so that's a good incentive to take a closer look. But the reason for buying this more than anything else will be because you want a Mercedes, or you want rear wheel drive, or you want an automatic gearbox. So there's that automatic gearbox, and being a Merc, it'll be lovely and smooth. It's a proper torque converter gearbox, not a robotized manual. So if you really want an automatic, the Mercs are worth looking out for. But take a test drive, because with the Mercedes, they do feel a bit softer on the road, and it's very much a case of personal preference, whether you like the Mercedes or the way the Fiat drives. They are very different. What you won't have any question about is the feeling of space in this vehicle. These settees are long enough to act as single beds, just remove the backrest and these little natty armrest cushions and you've got instant single beds or if you prefer you can make a transverse double. But either way you've got loads of room to entertain. Eight people in here for a convivial evening of cheese and wine and solving the world's problems with no problem at all. You've got plenty of room to entertain and lots of light with these big windows and the sunroof and that as well. And if you decide to feed them before they go back to their own vans, you've got a good kitchen to do so. So yeah, the kitchen has pretty much everything. Oven and grill, plenty of worktop, a bit more worktop, bottle racks, cup racks, big fridge freezer, microwave. Yeah, it's a top spec galley. And equally, because you've got no fixed bed, they've managed to fit in a full spec bathroom as well, even wardrobe in there and a good size separate shower. So as long as you don't mind the fact that this vehicle's got no fixed bed, it has got a very, very spacious feel to it. So there we have it. We've looked at 10 motorhomes, five brand new ones, five used ones. Have you picked a winner? We have. It's one of these five behind me. These Benimars really do look good value for money. You've got everything in this van that you need, and it's got lots of space, lots of kit, lots of payload. It works for families and couples. Yeah, it's a great motorhome. That's all for this month's DVD. We look forward to seeing you next time.
Thank you.